awesome God who reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is indeed an awesome God. We praise God for another opportunity to be on worship and praising ground. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. We are thankful that we are back in the sanctuary of St. James African Methodist Episcopal Church, the church living out God's commandment to love, through a commitment to serve. Today is a day we have not seen, and we're going to rejoice because God didn't promise it, but because of grace and mercy, we are here. We are so grateful that God has allowed us to open our eyes, to put our feet on the floor, and be able to get out the door and be in the house of prayer. Put your hands together and praise God for what God has done for us this week. We are so, so very blessed that God has moved and God has done what only God can do. Let us stand for our call to worship. Creator God, we praise you. Open our eyes to the mystery of your presence. May your realm come to life among us. Feed us with the bread of your word. With the grace of your forgiveness. All power and glory are yours, God of love. We will now be led further in worship by the St. James Praise. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, stand to your feet. If you're blessed, then you know it. Somebody else out. Hallelujah. A little simple song that says, Count your blessings and see what the Lord has done. It goes like this. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. You ought to count your many blessings. See what the Lord has done.
some marvelous things in my life. You ought to see what the Lord has done, St. James. We might still be in a pandemic, but see, we're all here. We might still have a lack of rest, but God yet moved us to come to church this morning. See what the Lord has done. God, we thank you this morning for everything that you've done in our lives. God, we thank you that we have eyes to see what you've done. We have ears to hear what you've done. We've got legs to prove that you're yet moving in our body. We thank you, oh God, for a spirit that is so sweet that it reminds us of all of the things that you brought us over. God, we thank you right now in this place that you brought us here to praise your name, that you brought us here to have congregation and faith and fellowship amongst Christian friends. And God, we thank you for those that are yet in the virtual space. God, we thank you that your spirit yet rests upon us in this place this morning. And we ask, oh God, that those that are on their way, whether through Facebook, whether through YouTube, whether through coming in the doors of the sanctuary, God, we thank you that you've already beat us here and you've already beat us toward our need. That we can yet testify that we've seen what you've done. And so on this morning, we ask, oh God, that you bless all of the praise and the worship. We ask that you bless all the prayers that will come forth. We ask that you bless every household that is represented here. God, we ask that you bless the preacher as he comes. Quiet his mind, oh God, and put a spark in his spirit so that he can speak yet of what you have done. God, right now we pray for those that are homeless right now, oh God. We pray for those that are hurting right now, oh God. We pray for those, oh God, who can't seem to pray for themselves. God, see into every household, oh God. See into every hospital room, oh God. See into every courtroom, oh God. See, oh God even into those who may be raised in hell and can't say no to it. But God, we know that you captured any bit of hell that is in our lives. You captured any bit of death that is looming around us and you captured it even, even into eternity. And so, oh God, right now, we thank you, we praise you, we bless your name because you have done some marvelous, marvelous things. It is in your holy name that we do pray, amen, amen, amen. 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 and amen. amen. Today the scripture is coming from the 138th Psalm. I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Psalm 138, verses 1 through 8. And it is a thanksgiving and praise. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name and your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called you, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of mine enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. Watch this. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. I'm gonna say that again. In spite of it all, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O oh Lord, it endures me. And do not forsake the word of your hand. God bless the readers, the hearers, and the doers of God's holy word. We're talking about the Lord giving good gifts. Let me sing for the best gift. Y'all yeah. will let me sing about that. For God so loved the world. 
Amen. Amen. Only begotten Son. Amen. All right, Sam, if you get me in the key of D or D flat, that make a difference. Got it? All right. Genesis, 
Amen. Hopefully, no one will have a problem finding it. Amen. If you do, well, come see me at the church. We'll do a little mini lesson. Amen. Genesis 18. Genesis 18. And I'm going to begin at the 22nd verse. Genesis 18th chapter, beginning at the 22nd verse. So the men turned from there and went towards Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before God. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and, and not forgive it for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you, from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom 50 righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham asked, answered, answered, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the 50 righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. Again, he spoke to him. Suppose 40 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose 30 are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. He said, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he, then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, for the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. For a topic for today, interceding for a community. Interceding for a community. Earlier this week, we saw a very tragic murder of a very well-beloved pastor. She passed at Capelville United Methodist Church. She was a district superintendent, what we would call a presiding elder. She was on her way to being a bishop in the United Methodist Church. But she was gunned down by three teenagers who wanted her car. Our community is in crisis. We, we live in a community where if, you're, if you drive an Infiniti or a, a Hyundai, you are four or five times more likely to have your car stolen from you. We live in a community that's in crisis. Yeah. Yeah. We have a district attorney who wants to lower the age that you can be tried as an adult to 13. We have a community that's in crisis. We, we're coming up on elections, and we, uh, if you read the ballot, there's literally a hundred candidates on the ballot. Many of us are trying to figure out who these people are, what they stand for, what, what message are they sending. Some are good, some are bad. We, we're just wondering. Our, our community is in crisis, and some of us are in a personal quandary saying to ourselves, what can we do for our community? The one thing that, that I can say is, in our community, we have to have people that are praying. Yeah. If we don't have people going to God on behalf of the community, our community will continue to go the direction it's going. If we don't have someone who is talking to God, on behalf of the community, our community will not recover from what, to, from what we're going through now. There was a time when 
uh, grandmothers and grandfathers could sit on their porch and not be bothered and not worry. Now our grandmothers and grandfathers, they have to stay in the house because they don't know if a bullet is going to fly. They don't know if somebody's going to drive by and just decide randomly that they want to rob somebody of their belongings that they worked so hard to uh, achieve. That our community needs somebody that's going to stand up for it in the spirit realm. We, our community is in crisis. In this text, we find another community that was in crisis. Uh, when we, we look at Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom, before we judge Sodom and Gomorrah, our community is not too much better than what Sodom and Gomorrah look like. Sodom and Gomorrah had issues with, they were not providing food for people that were homeless and hungry. They were, were in a place where the rich were getting richer, the poor were staying poor, and those that were in between didn't know what to do because they were working for the rich and they may have wanted to help somebody, but they could barely help themselves. The, the, the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were supposed to be hospitable, but they were turning into self-indulgent people who all they wanted to do was please and pleasure themselves and not do anything for anyone else. There was so much injustice there until God looked at Sodom and Gomorrah and said, I'm done. Enough is enough. And what's shameful and what frightens me is I don't want God to look at our community and say enough is enough. When Abraham and God had this conversation, Abraham has entertained God and two angels. They were standing before him in the form of three men. Abraham meets them, feeds them dinner, and, and two of them go on their way to Sodom and Gomorrah. And God stays with Abraham, and he tells Abraham what's about to happen. Abraham says to God, God, now, now wait a minute, God. Can, can we have a conversation about this, God? I, I, I know, God, that you are not pleased with, with what you see. You're not pleased with what you hear, God. But, but can we talk about this? Is, is it possible that, that you would spare the city if there's 50 righteous men left in the city. Would you spare the city? He, I find it so interesting that Abraham was bold enough to say to God, God, you can't do this. I, don't do this to the community. Don't let the community, don't destroy the community. God, don't let this happen. Abraham was bold enough to do it because of his relationship with God. Parenthetically, if you're going to intercede for the community, number one, you've got to have a real right relationship with God. You can't be playing with it. You've got to come and you've got to come correct. So Abraham was able to come to God correctly because God said, this is not in the text, but a little bit further up in the chapter, God says to God self, well, Abraham is my chosen. I, ble I promised Abraham I was going to make him the father of many nations. I, I promised I was going to bless him. So the least I can do is tell him what's about to happen. So he tells Abraham what's going to happen and, and Abraham says to God, God, there's got to be some righteous people left. There's got to be somebody righteous left in the community. God, if there's 50 righteous, will you, will you spare it? And then he goes down to 10. This is an old bargaining tool that in ancient times they would haggle at, at the uh, counters for if you were buying something, they would try to talk you down. That's all this is, is Abraham is basically trying to make a bargain with God, but he's also interceding on behalf of the righteous in the community. So today I want to, to say to you that when we intercede on behalf of the community, we can say to God, God, there's still some righteous people left in the community. There's still somebody in the community that loves you. There's still somebody in the community that respects you. There's still somebody in the community that wants to praise your name. There's still somebody in the community that cares about what, what the, that cares about the homeless and the hungry. There's still somebody in the community that's willing to lift up your name. There's still somebody out there. See, the reason God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah is because God did not see any redemptive quality in either city. God didn't see any good coming out of the city. And, and what, 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 what Abraham says is, God, there's got to be somebody out there that worships you. They can't be, everybody can't be bad. Everybody can't be a fool. Everybody can't be a sinner. 
So as I, as, as, as I, I look at our community today, I say the same thing. Everybody ain't a fool. Everybody ain't carjacked. Everybody's not a thief. Everybody is not trying to steal something from somebody. There's still some good people left. So on behalf of the good people, God, will you save the community? On behalf of the good people, God, will you not allow it to be destroyed? On behalf of the people that are still righteous, will you protect, God, your community? God, will you be merciful? God, will you show yourself mighty? God, will you do something in the community? We live in a community where we've got to we've got to intercede. And while we're interceding, we've got to remind God, God, there's some good people left. God, there's some good people left. They may look like our community's abandoned, but just say to God, God, we need you to move because there's some good people left. There's some aunties and some uncles that still love you. There's some grandmamas that want to walk to church because they still love you. They don't have a car, but they want to praise your name. There, there's some young people that want to lift up their hands and praise your name. There's some young folks that want to do right in school. They want to go to college. They want to get a career. They want to take care of their, their senior saints. There are some good folk left, God. There's some righteous people left, God. Will you please spare the community? Not only does Abraham say to God, there's some righteous people left. Abraham gets even bolder in his conversation with God. He says, God, you're the judge of the earth. You're the judge of the universe. You would not get rid of the righteous along with the wicked. Well, what Abraham is saying is, God, you are too just to destroy the entire community because there are some bad people in it. He said, God, you are too just to destroy the good with the bad. God, you are too just to destroy the righteous with the unrighteous. God, you are too good to decimate the, the good people, the people that want to work with the people that just don't care anymore. God, you are too just to do that. Let me bring it into the 21st century. God, you are too you are too just to allow our community to fall down because a few people want to act crazy. God, you are too just to allow our community to fall because we have a few bad politicians that don't care about us. All they care about is getting their check or they care about their popularity and their numbers. God, you are too good to, 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 to get rid of the righteous with the wicked. God, you are too good to let churches fall because there's some folk in it that don't know what they're doing. God, there's still some righteous folk out there. And because of your nature, you're not only a loving God, not only a merciful God, but you are a just God. You are the God who created justice. You are the God who reminds us every day to love justice and to love mercy. You are the God who tells us that we have got to live right and live before others. You are that same God who shows us what justice is. So God, we be I believe now that you will not destroy the righteous with the wicked. Abraham looks God in the face, so to speak, and says, God, you're not that kind of God. You see, in the ancient world, there were gods that were very vindictive and petty. They, they, were, they were very, very, very petty. If you upset them, if you said one wrong thing, they would destroy the entire city. And if, if, if somebody didn't worship them right, they wouldn't just take care of that one person. They would get rid of the whole community. But, but Abraham says to God, you're not that kind of God. When you, when you came to me, you showed yourself to be different. You showed yourself to be the God above all gods. You showed yourself to be a merciful God. You showed yourself to be a loving God. You showed yourself to be a God that would protect. You showed me that you are a God that would direct. You showed me that you were a God that would guide my path. You showed me that you were a God that would bless when I'm obedient. You showed me that you were the kind of God that was going to take somebody who wasn't much and make them so much more than they ever thought they could be. That's the kind of God you are. God, you are too just to allow the, the, the wicked, the, the righteous to die with the wicked. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Abraham was interceding for the community. Today, I just want to remind everybody that we've got to intercede for our community. We've got to go to God in prayer for our community. We've got to be the ones that, number one, we got, we got to be right. Let's be clear about that. We got to be right before we can intercede for the community. But when, when we realize that when we've at least gotten 
find ourselves halfway together. We can go to God and say, God, there's some righteous people left. Please do something in our community. God, there's some righteous people left. Please fix up our community. God, you are just too just to allow the righteous to perish with the wicked. You are too just to allow what's going on to continue. And we have to remember that God will indeed act, but God acts in God's time. So don't get discouraged if God doesn't act tomorrow, but you keep on praying for the community. You keep on praying that God does not destroy it. Keep on praying that God would you save the righteous. God, would you take care of the righteous. God, there's somebody out there that still cares. God, there's somebody out there that still loves. There's somebody out there that still wants to do the right thing. God, there's somebody out there that still cares about who you are and who's you and who we are. God, will you do something just for us? We have to intercede for our community. We have to intercede knowing that there have been some innocent victims. When I look, when I see the news every morning, somebody else has been shot. Every morning, somebody else's car has been stolen. Every morning, there's a politician standing on the screen talking about, well, uh, we would fix it, but. Every morning. I'm not talking about once in a while, but lately it's been every day. When you get up, it's something, something else. We've got to intercede for our community. We've got to talk to God and say, God, there's got to be somebody righteous left. There's somebody righteous left, God. And when you, when you save the community for the sake of the righteous, God, you are too just to allow this to keep on happening. God, we realize that all of us ain't right, but some of us are. God, we realize that all of us haven't gotten it together, but some of us, God, we, we, we are doing the best we know how to do. We are praying the best we know how to pray. We're fasting the best we know how to fast. We are living the best we know how to live. God, would you, would you, God, would you, God, turn it around for the community? Now, now what we have to remember is God is still going to deal with the wicked. Let's, let's be clear. God is still going to deal with the wicked. But what we have to concentrate on is those that are righteous. Yeah. Those that are doing right. Now, we're not judging. We're just praying, God, you see the righteous. We're not telling God who the righteous are. We're just telling God they're out there. Yeah. Yeah. We're just reminding God they still exist. So, God, there's some righteous people left. And you are too just to get rid of the righteous along with the wicked. Let us be those intercessors. Let us be the Abrahams of our neighborhood. Let us be the Abrahams in our apartment buildings. Let us be the Abrahams on our blocks where we will intercede and just remind God on a daily basis. There's some righteous people left, God. There's somebody out there that still loves you. There's somebody out there that still cares. God, we know you can turn it around. We're just waiting and watching. Amen and amen. amen.